So I don't know if you've noticed this, but history has a way of repeating itself over and over and over and over again until we have one of those light bulb moments and go, huh, hang on a second. This has happened like a gazillion times before. Perhaps it's because I'm still telling the same story that happened to me a long time ago. Because here's the thing about history. History is nothing more than a narrative. And we're going to go into the etymology in this video. And history is going to keep repeating itself until we rewrite the narrative that is that history. And that is what we are doing today. And I'm going to share a personal example of how I am currently doing that in my reality because history has been repeating itself in my reality. Huh, shock horror. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. My name is Headley, and if you have found your way to this channel, you are in the right place. I am a Law of Assumption coach, and if you would like support with any of the rescripting, reimagining of your reality, I am available for one-to-one -one Law of Assumption coaching. I also have a free and paid version of my self-concept course. I am the one, not me, you, you're the one, but I'm, yeah, you get it. <laughs> and my book, I Am Money, again, same thing. You are the I am of money. So all of the details for that is in the box below this video or at my website, youaretheone.com.au. Oh, and if I could just ask you to do one very simple thing, to engage with this video in some way, and even better, subscribe to my channel. And I'm also doing another I Am Masterclass on Thursday, the 31st of October at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, where I will go more in-depth into the I Am technique and how to apply it to your specific situations. The link will be in the box below this video, so check that out. Come along. I'd love to see you there. Thank you so much. So history has a way of repeating itself over and over and over <laughs> and over again until we get the message and go, huh, hang on a second. Maybe this has something to do with something that's going on within me as in my consciousness. And yes, you would be right about that. However, sometimes it takes a little while for that little penny to drop and it can take history repeating itself several times over, sometimes many, many, many times over until that penny does drop and we go, hang on a second, perhaps this has something to do with the history that I experienced in my childhood that I am just repeating now in my adulthood. And the good news is we are not bound to our narratives because history is nothing more than a narrative. We're going to go into the etymology. But when it feels like we are trapped in our realities, as sometimes it really does feel like that, you can know that those realities that you are experiencing are nothing more than a projected reflection. What that means is a projection of your consciousness and then formed into situations and events and characters that get reflected back. And then we act out in them. Unfortunately, we become identified with them. And fortunately, of course, but we become identified with the play that is going on. We get caught up. We forget that it's a projection of consciousness. I'm going to give you an example, personal example from my current reality in relation to my home story, which is the perfect example of this, because my home story has repeated itself in every single one of my homes, whether I'm renting or owning, it doesn't matter. The same narrative continues to play out. And if you have seen my channel from the beginning where I actually shared how I manifested my home story, I absolutely manifested the same home story in this home, different home, same story all over again. And this one has absolutely been a doozy, but sometimes they have to be doozies in order to get your attention. And it certainly has with this one. So I just want to share a little bit of that. But let's go into the etymology of the word history. Now, I'm sure you're aware of the his story, but let's just take it a little bit further into the etymology, which is the study of the origins of words, keeping in mind that words are not the answer. They are the signpost that points our awareness into certain states that we then experience and that get reflected back. So language is super, super duper important, but it's not the end of the story. History, late 14th century, relation of incidences, true or false, from old French, story, chronicle, history, from Latin, historia, narrative of past events, account, tale, story. And then it goes on, a learning or knowing by inquiry, an account of one's inquiries, knowledge, account, historical account, record, narrative. You get the drift. 
History is a narrative. Now, if we look at this word history and you know my love of pronouns and perspectives, you will realize that his story is third person. His story is third person perspective. So we are often looking at history from a third person perspective, which means we're focused on the events. We're focused on reality. Now, as long as our awareness, our focus, our attention is out on reality, we don't have any command over that because we don't have command over reality. We have command over consciousness, which is the cause of reality. Keeping in mind that consciousness is the one and only reality and reality is the reflection of consciousness. You know, and I say this, and I know I say this every video, I myself get tripped up in my own reality. I forget that this is a reflection of my consciousness and I get caught up in the reality of the experience. And if the experience is unpleasant, then I react to it like any normal human being. You know, we're all having a very human experience here. I'm getting better for sure. But I get caught up in my reality thinking that it's real and forgetting that it's a reflection of my consciousness set up from my history that continues to repeat itself because I haven't realized that it is coming from my history and I need to rewrite the narrative. We have got there this time though. So history is a narrative and it is going to keep repeating itself until we rewrite the narrative. But in order to change the narrative, we have to know what the narrative is. And that is where we look to reality because reality is your feedback system. Reality is the reflection of what is going on in your subconscious, meaning the narrative that is playing out in your subconscious. If you don't know what it is, just look into your reality. If your reality is showing you that you're a victim in this area, in this area, in this area, then yes, you have a narrative that I am a victim. It's subconscious. You don't know it's there, but reality is helping you to know it is. And that has certainly been my experience. So what I want to share with you is an example. Now I am going to share the old story. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I want to actually show you how history can repeat itself. The narrative can repeat itself in what appears to be different events, like different home stories. But the reflection is always the same. The narrative is always the same. And I've only got it now with this current home, which has reflected back the same home story, which just blows my mind. Sometimes I'm speechless because I look back on the home story. It's the same home story. I didn't see it. My history, my historical home story, that's the home story that I inherited uh, from my childhood and my upbringing. That was chaotic. There was a lot of conflict. Uh, there was a lot of fractures. There was a lot of upheaval, you know, all turmoil, all of that story. So that's my historical home story. Now, within that story, I felt powerless. I was disempowered. I didn't have any power to change it. And I was just bounced around in this home story. So the assumption that lodged itself in my subconscious is that I am disempowered or I am powerless in my own home. Throughout my 20s and early 30s, I'm renting. As a renter, I am subject to the landlord. The landlord is the one who has control and who has power. So I was already playing out that narrative, but that narrative just felt normal. It felt familiar. Uh, there was no real issues around that, but there was always that feeling of like, Ugh, you know, at any minute, the landlord can just like pull the rug out from under you. So that was always there with me. One of the reasons that I wanted to purchase my home was because I wanted to feel in control of my home. I wanted to come out from under the power of the landlords and I wanted to be able to live life on my terms. So I bought into an apartment apartment building with five apartments. It was in Bronte in Sydney, beautiful area. And I bought into this apartment. Next door to me was a family. And this family was chaotic. It was just very, very loud and it was very chaotic and I hated it. The big issue, however, was that this building, the two apartments up above, were owned and rented out. And the owner of those apartments had given the proxy votes for the strata to my neighbor. So they had their vote and they also had the two proxy votes. Now there are five apartments, meaning they have the three votes and there are two more votes, which meant I could not do anything that I wanted in this building. And when it came to me wanting a dog, they would not let me get a dog because they had the three votes and they were like, well, we don't want a dog. We've got the votes. I felt powerless. I am unaware of 
the history repeating itself at this point. But that's exactly what was happening in my first home. And the reason that it was so shocking is because this was the first time that I was an owner. So I just expected that I would have power and I would have control of the way I lived in my own home. And my reality reflected back in this building that I had no power and I had no choice on how I could live in my own home. I had to run everything by them. So that's one example of the narrative getting played out. And this is why I wanted to share this example, because as you will see, it's the same narrative getting played out differently, which is why it can be confusing and why it can take a little while to recognize history repeating, because it's not always identical. So I moved to Bali and I purchased the lease from this Balinese family and everything had to go through the family. And I could not do anything with this house without the family's permission. Not only that, if I traveled anywhere and I rented the place out, I had to rent it through the family, which meant that the family had control over the incomes from the rentals. Now, when I looked at the rentals after a few years, I saw that the family were taking a 60-40 cut, but I had no power to do anything about it because they were the ones who owned the land and if they wanted, they could actually have me kicked out and keep the rest of the money from the lease that I had given them. So I actually had to play by their rules. I had to play the game and once again I was living in my own home unable to do what I wanted and I was feeling very powerless and very out of control. Now I left Bali for other reasons because I got extremely sick over there but I was also incredibly grateful to get out of there because of this situation with the family where I just felt like I was getting completely ripped off. So I finished that, I came back to Australia, I moved up to the north coast where I found a rental. So I'm back in familiar ground where I'm no longer owning and I'm renting. I've still got the property in Bronte and that's being rented out. But this woman just had no boundaries. Like I'm paying full rent for this place and she would just come in and like do whatever she needed to do. And she would have people coming in, like she'd let in tradespeople without telling me and just, you know, a real kind of breach of boundaries. It just felt like at any minute, like she could just pull the wool out from under me and the rental market at that time and still is, was pretty competitive. So I was living on eggshells and again, I felt powerless and she wouldn't allow me to have a dog. So I was like, well, I have to have a dog. So I'm going to buy, I'm gonna buy my own place. I'm gonna sell Bronte and I'm gonna buy a place. I then bought this place and this place is a duplex. So I actually share a wall with my neighbors. And over the last two and a half years, I have watched my neighbors go through an acrimonious divorce where it has just been horrible. All of this shit has gone on on the other side of the wall and it affects my quality of living. By this time, I'm working with law of assumption. There were so many different people living in the house next door and I was constantly scripting. I was using the I am technique. It was working. People were moving out, but then somebody else would move back in and I'm like constantly I aming and re-scripting. And I got to the point where recently I manifested a complete break where there was no one living in there for three months. And I went, oh my God, this is heaven. Like, thank God, you know, it's been two and a half years of just this feeling powerless in my own home. And now they've just moved back in and they put the music up really loudly the other day. I actually realized that I have a narrative running that I am powerless in my own home, which is the history, the historical narrative that I inherited. And that same narrative is playing out today all these years later. Because I've been the owner, I've been the renter, and in every one of those situations has been the same experience where I feel like I have no power. And once you realize that history is repeating itself and history is nothing more than a narrative, and that narrative is playing out in the circumstances and situations that you are experiencing in reality, then you can change the narrative. And that is exactly what I have just done. So this is still in play, but already it feels like I am now back in command of this narrative because I've been able to acknowledge what the narrative is, which is I'm powerless in my own home, whether I'm owning or renting. Somehow, miraculously, I end up feeling powerless. And that is because that was my history. And now that I know that, I'm in command of the narrative. So I'm now able to command the new narrative, which is I am empowered in my own home. That's all you have to do. You just have to change the narrative. But first, you've got to know what the narrative is. And I would always suggest staying with I am. So I am disempowered in my own home to I am empowered in my own home.
It is as simple as that. This is why history has been repeating itself. And now that I'm in command of the narrative, I now know that things can start to reorganize themselves. I don't know how, I don't have to know how. All I need to know is what is my ideal home life? How do I want my home life to be? And then I can actually go into a vision and where I'm living in that home life. And then I can also go back and revise that same vision in my history as well. So if I'm wanting a quiet and peaceful peaceful, calm home life in which I'm able to choose how I live, I can actually take that vision, I can take that assumption, I can take that narrative and I can revise my past home story, my history home story. What would my home life look like if it was calm and peaceful and I was able to live with some choice in the matter, even though I am a child? Like, what would that look like? And so then you've got a past memory, you have a future memory that are in rapport and that will start to get reflected back in your reality now. So I wanted to share that story with you, including the old story, because when you have a narrative running, it will reflect back in reality, but it's not always identical which is why it's not always easy to identify. Always stay in I am as best you can. Whatever you're seeing in reality, claim it with I am, and then you rewrite the narrative. You command the new story. You are the infinite I am. I am is everything. It's powerless and powerful. All of the potentials, everything comes from I am. So when we're talking history, we want to bring it back to I am's story. It's not his story. It's not her story. It's I am story. Whatever story you're telling with I am, that's the story that is going to get projected back. But history itself is third person storytelling. And we want to come back from that. So come back into I am, which is first person, which is the infinite observer of reality, which is the infinite storyteller of your reality. And in order to change your reality, you have to come back in to that infinite storyteller of I am and change the narrative from there. Take from that what you will. Please leave your wonderful comments. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.